So in our previous video, we had learned to take the derivative of quotients of two functions using the quotient rule. And today we will be knocking out the last one of our differentiation formulas. And this one is called the chain rule. And that is used in order to take the derivative of composite functions. That is to say, a function which is trapped within another function. So say we wanted to take the derivative of a function such as sine of 2x. We know how to take the derivative of sine of x. We also know how to take the derivative of 2x. However, taking the derivative of a function trapped within another function is not as simple as just taking the derivative, derivative of each of its constituent pieces. So the answer to this would not be cosine of 2. Let's go and write that out. Not equal to cosine of 2. Assuming that you went and took the derivative of sine of x outside and 2x on the inside, this is not the case. What it is that you'll be doing in order to take the derivative of these composite functions is you will be following the following format, which is you take the derivative of the outer function, that is, we will split it up into an f of x, a g of x, a f prime of x, and a g prime of x, just as we did for our uh, product rules and product rule and quotient rule. So what we'll be doing is we will take our f of x, which will be our outer function. In this case, our outer function will be sine of x because we have 2x trapped within the sine, so the sine will be the outer function. Our inner function is going to be 2x because the 2x is contained within. So our inner function is 2x. Our f prime of x is just we take the derivative of our f of x, which is cosine of x. And our g prime of x is just our derivative of 2x, which is 2. Now essentially what it is we'll be doing here is using this formula right over here, which is f prime of x composed of g of x multiplied by g prime of x. This is to say the derivative of the outer function composed of the inner function multiplied by the derivative of the inner function. It's a mouthful, it doesn't really matter, just remember the formula and you can take the derivative of composite functions relatively easily. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to shove our g of x into our f prime of x and then multiply that entire expression by g prime of x. So if we wanted to compose f prime of x with g of x, essentially what it is that we do is we would put g of x wherever it is that we see x in our f prime. So here we have f prime of x, which is cosine, and because we see an x right over here, we're going to substitute in our g prime. So our g prime is 2x, and then we'll multiply this entire expression by the derivative of our g of x, which is g prime. g prime is 2. You wanted to simplify this and clean it up, bring this to the other side. Our final answer, final answer is 2 cosine of 2x. Now that is the derivative of sine of 2x using the chain rule. And without further ado, let's move on to more examples. Now I'm probably going to need a little bit of space here. Say I wanted to take the derivative. All right, I'm just going to rewrite this up here because I'm definitely going to need more space. Now say we wanted to evaluate the derivative of e to the x squared. All right, e to the x squared. We will split this up into four functions, f, g, f prime, and g prime. So we need to look at this as a composition of two functions that we can easily differentiate. So essentially what we've got over here is e to the x squared. So what we can view this as is an x squared trapped within an e to the x function. We know that e to the x is easily differentiable. The derivative of e to the x is always e to the x. And we know how to differentiate x squared. So essentially the way we're going to set this up is we will have e to the x will be our outer function and then x squared will be our inner function because it's trapped within the e to the x. So f of x is e to the x, g of x will be the x squared because it's trapped within the e to the x, f prime of x, e to the x does not change when it's derived, and g prime of x will be 2x. So essentially what we're doing now is we're going to plug in g of x wherever it is, wherever it is that we see x in our f prime. So our derivative will be e, to the, and then we plug in g of x wherever it is that we see x, e to the x squared, 
multiplied by the derivative of our g, which is 2x, times 2x. So the answer is, you want to flip this around, this will be 2x e to the x squared. That is the derivative of e to the x squared using the chain rule. All right, we want to take the derivative of 3x plus 9 all to the 10th power. Now this would be a real pain to take the derivative of if you wanted to distribute this 10 times and then use the power rule in order to differentiate each piece. Luckily the chain rule will make things a lot easier for us. So what we can view this as is 3x plus 9 trapped within a x to the 10th function. See how this entire thing is raised to the power of 10? That, can, that means that our outer function is going to be x to the 10th power. So we will write this out as f of x is equal to x to the 10th. Then we got our g of x, which is our inner function, which is essentially what's trapped within. So we have 3x plus 9. Our f prime of x is just the derivative of x to the 10th, which is 10x to the 9th. And g prime of x is the derivative of 3x plus 9, which is simply 3. So what we're doing now is we're going to substitute in g of x wherever it is that we see x in our f prime. So we have 10, and then here there's the, there's the x, so we substitute in our g, 3x plus 9, all to the 9th power. And then we multiply this entire expression by the derivative of our inner function, or our g prime, which will be 3. So if you want to clean this up, you can join these two terms together and you can make this 30 times 3x plus 9 to the 9th power. Now if you wanted to distribute this, it would be really, really large and messy. Luckily we've got it in a small compact form, it's nice and easy to use. However, if you want to go and distribute it, go ahead and be my guest, you might be there for a couple of years, perhaps. So we use the chain rule to take the derivative of cosine of x to the cubed, x, cosine of x cubed, cosine of x to the third. So this is pretty obvious what our inner and our outer function are. So we have our outer function, which is cosine of x, and it's containing an x to the third function. So our outer function, f of x, is cosine of x. Our inner function is what's trapped within the outer function, which is x to the third. f prime of x will be negative sine of x, and then g prime of x is the derivative of x to the third, which is 3x squared. So wherever it is that we see x in our f prime, we substitute our g, which will be negative sine of, composed of g, x to the third, then multiply that entire thing by our g prime, which is 3x squared. Now I'm really nitpicky about having the coefficients out in front, so I'm just going to drag this to the front. Negative 3x squared times sine of x to the third is our final derivative using the chain rule. Now in future examples, there will be a couple that require more than one use of chain rule, and they will come up very soon. We want to take the derivative of ln of e to the x. And I find this one very interesting. The outer function is clearly ln of x, and then we have an e to the x which is trapped within the ln of x. So our f of x will be ln of x, our g of x will be what's contained within, which is e to the x, our f prime of x is the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, and then our g prime of x is e to the x, because e to the x does not change when you take its derivative. So what we've got left over is f prime composed of g, so wherever it is that we see x in our f prime, we substitute in our g. So we have 1 over, because we have an x here, we substitute in g, so e to the x, multiplied by the derivative of our g, which is also e to the x. That is our final derivative. We can cross out the e to the x's, they cancel each other out. Our final derivative is 1. So the derivative of ln of e to the x is 1. Pretty interesting, at least in my opinion. So if we wanted to take the derivative of the function 7 to the 5x, 
So essentially what it is that we can do for this problem is we can view it as a composition of 7 to the x and 5x as our inner function. So f of x will be 7 to the x power and then composed of g of x which will be 5x. The derivative of 7 to the x is 7 to the x multiplied by the natural log of 7 and the derivative of 5x is just 5. So what we'll do here is we're going to plug in 5x wherever it is that we see x in our f prime. So we've got 7 to the 5x multiplied by ln of 7 and then we will multiply that entire thing by the derivative of our g. Our g is 5x, our g prime is 5, so we multiply this entire thing by 5. Now this is our final answer. Now don't be tricked over here, you cannot multiply this by this because they don't have the same uh, exponent. So our final answer will be 7 to the 5x multiplied by the natural log of 7, all multiplied by 5. 2x plus 1 to the 7th, this is exactly like the example that I had done not too long ago. However, what it is that we can view this as is just an extension of the power rule function where it is that we drag the exponent down, we subtract by 1, except there's one additional step. Now we need to multiply by the derivative. This is kind of like a subconscious use of the chain rule. So without splitting this up into f and g and f prime and g prime, let's go and do that. So if we wanted to drag this power down, essentially what it is that we'd be doing is this would become 7 times 2x plus 1 raised to the n minus 1, n minus 1 being 6, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is just 2. This entire thing is equal to 14 times 2x plus 1 to the 6th power. Now, if we wanted to do it using the chain rule approach, we could do the exact same thing, where it is that we will have the entire thing raised to the 7th power, so we can view the outer function as x to the 7th. Our inner function will be 2x plus 1. And then we take each of their respective derivatives, which is 7x to the 6th and 2. And wherever it is that we see an x in the f prime, we put in our g. So it's going to be 7 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 6 multiplied by 2, which is multiplied by our g prime. And this yields exactly the same answer as we did before with the extension of the power rule, which is also just a subconscious use of the quotient rule, uh, chain rule. The next derivative we want to take is secant of sine of x. So it's pretty cle clear here what's trapped inside of what. We have a sine of x which is trapped within a secant of x, so secant of x will be our outer function. So f of x will be secant of x f prime will be sine of x. And if you haven't already familiarized yourself with the long list of derivatives that you're going to need in order to survive Calculus 1, it's free. Go and check it out on my website. I will post a link in the description or the comments below. And the derivative of secant of x is secant of x times tangent of x. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because we have two x's in our f prime. And our g prime of x is the derivative of sine of x, which is just cosine of x. So essentially what we're doing here is we are substituting in g of x wherever it is that we see x in f prime. So we have secant of g of x, which is sine of x, multiplied by tangent of, because we have an x over here, we will, we will substitute in sine of x once again multiplied by the derivative of our g of x, which is g prime of x, times cosine of x. And there's not really much else that you can do in order to simplify this expression. That is the final answer for the derivative of this function.